In this part, we're looking at the patch replacer tool and also the tracker. So we're using those two rather complicated tools together to get the uh, final result we need. So make sure you pay attention to where we are within the panels because it will get a little bit complicated. On several runs, the car managed to pick up small specks of dirt, and while we did have our team diligently waiting to wipe everything down in between takes, inevitably bits of dirt snuck in, and with the white paint job, these were really obvious on certain shots where we're in close on the details, such as the plane identifier, which is a really important link with Concorde, so we needed to have that in. So what I'm gonna do is take you through the process for adding in this correction where we're removing the dirt. First of all, I'm just gonna disable the node that I've currently got in there, and we're just gonna add a new serial node in. Really straightforward, we just go over to the effects library on the right hand side. We go down to the resolve revival set of effects, and within that, looking down, you're gonna see patch replacer, drag that on. Patch Replacer works like the clone stamp tool would in Photoshop or After Effects. So all we're gonna do is pull this down here because we need everything to be roughly where that speck of dirt is. Gonna make the area that it's covering a little bit smaller. And then we place oh, where are we? this side over here, this side over here, and just take it down until we're only covering what we need to there. That has to sit in just the right place so that the tone is about the same. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Now obviously, if this was a static shot, it would be really easy now just to leave that. As long as nothing crosses in front of it, it would be fine, but we're not dealing with a static shot. The car's moving, the camera's moving, so we're gonna need to track that on. We go to our tracker panel, and within the tracker panel, just see this uh, section that says window just here. Click on window and scroll down to effects. Once you're there, you can add these tracking markers in. You just click on bottom left there. And I like to add those two areas of high contrast, high detail, so you're going to get a really decent track. And put one over the G just here as well. Just make sure that's over there. And then maybe a final tracking point, and this one I'm gonna put in just there on a, of the seam of the car. Now what we have to do at that point, periodically, Always click save just in case, and then track forwards. It'll track those details moving forwards, and then if you start a part way through the clip, on this one I did because I wanted to make sure that we got the most areas to track, which is in the middle of the clip because the car's moving in front of the frame there. And then we just track back. And that's done a pretty decent job. So that should all be tracked in, and if we look where we were actually expecting to see our dirt, it is ooh, almost completely gone. If there's any little blips like that where the movements just um, got the better of where your position was or how big your effect was, you can just again go into the effect just there, effects overlay, and you just manipulate this a smidge, take it to the right place, and you'll be able to cover that up perfectly. Now there are a couple of um, controls that you've got on the right hand side just there. So if you were, for example, wanting to do a pure just clone, you can do that. We're doing the adaptive blend at the moment, which most of the time I find to be the best option, but you might get a better um, key out, if you like, with the clone tool. There is also the fast mask. Fast mask is a little bit different and it wouldn't be suitable for this application, but for some things it can work really well. So we'll just put that to clone. Uh, detail replacement, we're not gonna get into, we don't need to worry about that too much. We will blur the edges just a little bit. And then if we track back and forth, we should see that that is nicely tracked on to our speck of dirt and everything is gone from the final shot. So it's a very easy process to add that in. And once you're comfortable with the idea of putting the effect on, putting the tracking onto the effect and then just finessing everything, it is so fast just to drop that onto your footage. So it's really useful to have that within the color grading pane here in DaVinci. If you wanted to go further and you want to do something more complicated with that, you do have the option of going into fusion and doing a more complicated object removal, but that's uh, getting to more compositing side and it's not 
so much uh, in the color pane, so you'd need to learn that workflow. But this works perfectly for most projects, and I think actually we've used this on every single project recently, just taking out tiny things which before would have been a round trip through After Effects and involved lots of fiddling around. This is easy just to throw in on the color pane and it works like a charm. In the next part, we're gonna take some of what we learned just here with tracking and use it to change the color of a little model car.